Right, hi. Um, my name's Anna. I, I actually work as an account manager at Text Nation, so basically looking at what our accounts are doing at the moment, where we're seeing current trends, um, different flows per market. Um, Text Nation is a mobile messaging and billing aggregator. Um, we work in 88 countries and over 200 countries of messaging. Um, we've currently just expanded into our wholesale division for bulk and we're currently focusing mainly on mobile to most players per market and kind of what you can do there. Um, I think that premium SMS over the last few years has changed quite a lot, um, mainly, mainly in regards to regulation. I think it's become a lot more difficult to operate in, in the majority of markets. So it's kind of looking at what you can do and what, you need, what sort of changes you need to make. Um, the current technology that are around are obviously direct, direct operator billing or direct carrier billing, basically the same thing. Um, we've got premium SMS, which is either web opt-in or MO opt-in. It obviously completely depends per country as to what, what is really available technically. And then you've got um, single click, which is basically just MSIS, MSISDN forwarding with header enrichment. And that's available, um, obviously, if you pay for it in the UK, is, is probably the, the one that's most well known. Um, looking at current trends in the market, um, I, I attended iDate a few weeks back, and um, dating and social seems to be kind of the most global success story at the moment. Um, it's kind of, it continues to grow. And I think they said that now that everyone's sort of looking at optimizing their mobile site. Um, companies such as um, Meetic, who own Match.com and also Tinder, um, they obviously they it's kind of two separate kind of divisions of the company, I guess. Um, they've noticed that since Tinder's come along, um, all the regular desktop sites have, have actually gone down revenue-wise. So it's about looking at bringing those back up to speed, and also looking at monetizing Tinder as an app because obviously at the moment it's free, um, and it, I think it's kind of hurt the industry slightly, but. It's, all the other companies are now, are now sort of like upping their mobile spend and things like that because I think it's over 30% of views globally are now on a mobile site and if it's not optimised then you really are missing out. Um, adult as well, I think is, is particularly, in, I, think, I know there's a lot of adult sort of content providers at this show in particular and I think it's become a lot more difficult um, globally to be able to operate adult but it's kind of about how you do it. In Tax Nation, we've actually seen a up in sort of click per play, as opposed to subscription models. So also as well, um, the, the type of cell cast model, like the, the online TV, um, there's a lot more companies coming up with that as well. So sort of video on demand, but kind of with a slight twist. iGaming is another interesting one. Um, this has come up more recently as well. I think sites using it for user acquisition models. So signing up on your mobile without having to enter any details. Um, gets people to sign up for the first time, deposit 10 pounds, and then they're pushed to credit card to make further transactions. Software and digital goods as well, particularly as smartphones become more technically enabled. A lot of people are sort of installing antivirus software on their phones, which it makes sense to have a subscription model from your mobile phone, as opposed to paying via credit card. And also gaming as well. And the updates in gaming, um, HTML5 games. Um, the, the older gaming content is becoming a lot less prevalent alongside ringtones, things like that, particularly more in the, in the developed markets. So that's sort of the shift we've seen, is people actually adding more value to the current services they're using, so updating their content to make it more appealing to the more developed markets. Um, obviously, we work in 88 countries, so it's kind of looking across the board at what's popular and where, where it is popular. You've kind of got the developing markets like LATAM and places in Africa, whereby we're seeing a huge increase in things that were popular in the UK and the Nordic regions sort of five years ago are now popular there. So what companies are looking to do is sort of move, they've moved their UK stuff forward and they're, they're investing more in the content that they're distributing there. And then all their older stuff isn't just going to waste, they're then expanding into other markets as well. It's, it's interesting actually, because if you look at the amount of spend you get in the UK, you need a lot more transactions in developing markets to be able to get the same return back. Um, there's, there's been a big increase in things like drop-down billing and multi-billing as well in developing markets, so that 
obviously there's a lot more prepay users, so no credit errors and things like that. So it's about looking at what you can do in those markets to be able to increase your conversion conversion rate. Um, huge, huge markets at the moment are in Latam, particularly for gaming content and dating, because I think the use of credit card is a lot less prevalent there. So everybody tends to pay via the mobile phone for it. The more mature markets, um, I'd, I'd probably say main areas of Europe. The Nordics now and the UK, you can get upwards of sort of 80 plus percent network payout. So it's making things that wouldn't be possible due to fixed costs previously. People are now paying via mobile. Um, seen a really big increase in, like I said, antivirus software and different pieces of software that do come with fixed costs to companies. But now because they can get a higher return on what they're selling, there is actually a massive increase into getting people to pay by mobile if they're accessing it by the mobile website. Um, I've just got some examples now of the types of flows that are doing really, really well. Obviously, I know everyone puts a lot of emphasis on conversion rates and mobile optimised flows. Um, in the UK, you've obviously got pay for it, which is, I think, becoming stronger as a brand as well, because people are now starting to recognise that it is, it's kind of, in the same way you'd sort of see PayPal and you trust it, it's becoming a lot more like that. It looks very clean and it looks very sort of compliant, so it's Obviously, it keeps the regulators happy, it keeps the networks happy, and it gives sort of a combined user brand for everyone to recognise. Um, physical goods is an interesting one. I think as the development of the e-money licences, obviously, Boca have got one, Oxygenate have got one. This is becoming a lot more interesting. This is actually a campaign that was worked on a few years ago with Vodafone. It was a test campaign for Pizza Hut. I think that this, this is something that will happen in the future, but it's kind of, it's a lot more difficult due to the banking regulation. And I think they're, they're kind of a little bit cautious into mobile networks becoming kind of banks in a way and paying for physical goods. So it's, it's slightly more difficult in the UK than I think in other markets. But with the e-money licenses, it's, it's, it, will be, it will be easier to do these type, types of deals. In Switzerland, you've got EasyPay. Um, Switzerland is majority market share with, East, oh, with um, Swisscom. So you're looking at 65% market share. Um, as you can see, it's Switzerland is pretty much Swisscom. So you, you have a single click flow and it is pure DCB. And it's, it's very interesting. Plus you, you have sort of backing of the networks there as well. Um, it, looks, it looks very, it once again looks like a brand you can trust. And that's really, really important for certain, for certain companies. Um, then you've got things like Ireland and Finland where single click billing is available. It looks very much like pay for it. We sort of use the template of pay for it, but it is fully customizable. So it's interesting because obviously a lot of people want to be able to control what, what their users see. So these types of flows, a lot of people find, I guess, more, more exciting than a payment window because you can actually control and you can incorporate it in. I think it's really important as well to keep, keep users on a page. Like we see a high conversion rate if you, like when pay for it's integrated on straight onto the payment page and it's just a drop down as opposed to taking users off into another page and that affects your conversion rate massively. Obviously with the amount of sort of affiliate marketing and spam and things in particularly the UK, being taken off to a separate page can probably look like it's another company you can trust and it can be taking you off anywhere. So I think it's really important to keep it all, all on the same page. Um, Sweden Y Wallet is kind of like Sweden's answer to pay for it to a certain extent. I think when this was first launched, it was less popular because obviously you had to sign up before you could actually make a purchase. Um, I think they've now realised the kind of error of their ways because nobody was really signing up for it. So now for the first transaction, you don't actually have to sign up so people can actually test the service out before they actually sign up for it. Um, Sweden, it's not single click on subscriptions, but it is single click on repeat transactions. So this could be particularly good for things like pay per play, um, mainly, mainly used for gaming actually in Sweden. Um, it's, it's a very clean flow and although it is Y Wallet branded on here, it is customizable as well. So um, if, you don't, if you can't get single click, and you, which, which you can't in some countries, um, the webkin opt-in is definitely the cleanest way to go. It's, it's, a, it's a lot better than being having to reply straight from your phone if you receive a pin. It looks cleaner, the process is just much nicer for the, for the end user. 
So, yeah, to wrap up, I think mobile optimised flow is probably are going to become more prevalent, particularly in developing markets. We're seeing a huge rise in people actually requesting direct operator billing. But I think it's, I think it's just as important to also still look at premium SMS. I don't think it's a dead technology. Um, everyone puts emphasis on it's got to be direct operator billing, but if the outpayments are just as good and you're able to make the flow work just as well, then I think premium SMS is, is still going to be something that should be considered. I think it's just really about the way you do it.